Welcome to True Crime Case Files, the podcast that delves into the most intriguing and shocking criminal cases. In today's episode, we uncover the chilling story of Bethany Montauk, a beloved high school English teacher whose life was cut short by a sinister act of murder. Join us as we explore the dark secrets and shocking revelations that led to her tragic demise. Bethany Montauk, age 36, was a dedicated and passionate high school English teacher residing in Wilmington, Delaware. Known for her kindness and creativity in the classroom, Bethany was admired by both her students and colleagues. Her unwavering commitment to helping others made her a beloved figure in the community. Despite facing personal challenges in her marriage, Bethany maintained a positive outlook and strived to make a difference in the lives of those around her. She dedicated her days to shaping young minds, always going the extra mile to ensure her students received the best education possible. Outside of the classroom, Bethany's love for wine led her to explore the local vineyards in Delaware. She would spend her weekends visiting wineries, immersing herself in the rich history and culture of the region's wine production. She became well-versed in the different grape varieties, fermentation processes, and the art of pairing wine with food. She had an impressive knowledge of various wine brands and was something of a wine connoisseur. Unfortunately, as many teachers in America know, her passion for teaching was not enough to pay the bills, and so she worked as a sommelier at a local upscale restaurant in downtown Wilmington to make ends meet, showcasing her passion for wine and providing recommendations to patrons. April of 2002 was a time of excitement and anticipation for Bethany. She had been selected to attend a prestigious education conference in New York City, where she would have the opportunity to connect with other educators and learn from experts in her field. This conference was highly regarded in the education community, and Bethany saw it as a chance to enhance her teaching skills and bring fresh ideas back to her students. Little did Bethany know that she would never go to this conference, would never go anywhere again. A tragic turn of events that would forever change the lives of those who knew and loved her. The investigation into her death would uncover a web of secrets and hidden motives, revealing a side of Bethany's life that no one could have imagined. On a fateful day in April 2002, the lifeless body of Bethany Montauk, a beloved high school English teacher, was discovered in her residence located in Wilmington, Delaware. The date, forever etched in the minds of those involved in the investigation, was April 10th. The weather on that day was mild with a gentle breeze sweeping through the streets of Wilmington, as the city buzzed with the anticipation of the upcoming Easter holiday. It was early morning when tragedy struck the Montauk household. Bethany's husband, Mark Anthony Montauk, stumbled upon a scene that would forever haunt him. Shock and disbelief washed over him as he entered their home and discovered the lifeless body of his beloved wife. The room was filled with an eerie silence broken only by the distant sound of birds chirping outside. The authorities were immediately alerted, and a team of seasoned detectives from the Wilmington Police Department swiftly arrived at the Montauk residence. The entire house was cordoned off, and the investigation quickly gained media attention, with local news outlets such as the Wilmington Gazette and Channel 8 News reporting on the shocking crime. Neighbors, friends, and colleagues of Bethany Montauk were left in a state of disbelief and grief. The tight-knit community rallied together, holding candlelight vigils and organizing fundraisers to support Bethany's grieving family. The tragedy sent shockwaves through the city of Wilmington, leaving its residents on edge and desperate for answers. As the investigation unfolded, the police remained tight-lipped about the details surrounding Bethany's murder. Rumors began to circulate, with some speculating that the crime was a result of a botched robbery, while others believed it to be a targeted attack. The uncertainty and fear that gripped the community were palpable, as everyone wondered who could commit such a heinous act against a beloved teacher. The police wasted no time in responding to the distressing discovery of Bethany Montauk's lifeless body. On that fateful April day in 2002, the investigators arrived at the Montauk residence with a sense of urgency, ready to unravel the truth behind this heinous crime. Detective Sarah Anders and Detective James Anders the famous husband and wife team of the Wilmington Police, known for their meticulous approach to investigations, took charge of the case. They were determined to bring justice to Bethany and her grieving loved ones. As they entered the crime scene, a sense of foreboding hung in the air. The Montauk residence, once a place of warmth and laughter, 
now stood as a haunting reminder of the tragedy that had unfolded. The investigators carefully observed their surroundings, noting every detail that could potentially lead them closer to the truth. Traces of blood stained the walls and floor, a chilling testament to the violence that had taken place. Signs of a struggle were evident, with overturned furniture and shattered glass scattered throughout the room. It was clear that Bethany had fought for her life, leaving behind a harrowing scene for the investigators to piece together. One crucial piece of evidence stood out amongst the chaos, a glass of Chardonnay wine. The investigators suspected that this innocent-looking beverage had been used as the murder weapon. The toxic substance that tainted the wine was identified as deadly cyanide, a potent poison that could swiftly end a life. The investigators meticulously collected every possible clue, ensuring that no detail went unnoticed. They dusted for fingerprints, carefully bagged and labeled potential evidence, and photographed the crime scene from every angle. The room was meticulously combed for any trace of the perpetrator, any hint that would lead them closer to solving this chilling mystery. As the investigation progressed, the detectives reached out to experts in forensic science. They employed advanced techniques, analyzing the wine glass for DNA, fingerprints, and any other trace evidence that could link the killer to the crime. The clock was ticking, and the pressure to solve the case grew with each passing day. The investigation into the murder of Bethany Montauk captivated the attention of the local community and garnered media coverage. News outlets such as the Wilmington Gazette and the Delaware Times reported on the progress of the investigation, keeping the public informed and engaged in the search for justice. With each passing day, the detectives inched closer to uncovering the truth behind Bethany's tragic demise. They knew that time was of the essence, and they were determined to bring the perpetrator to justice. In the investigation of the shocking murder of beloved high school English teacher Bethany Montauk, the police turned their attention to her husband, Mark Anthony Montauk. Mark, a 38-year-old, presented himself as a successful investment banker, but beneath his bland and pleasant facade lurked a web of secrets. Detectives Sarah Anders and James Anders, a husband and wife team known for their meticulous approach to solving crimes, suspected that Mark had a motive to eliminate Bethany. It was discovered that Mark had a life insurance policy worth a staggering $300,000 on his wife, raising eyebrows and leading investigators to delve deeper into his financial motivations. During the intense interrogation, Mark's emotions fluctuated between anger and calmness as he vehemently denied any involvement in his wife's murder. The detective skillfully probed his alibi, scrutinizing the events leading up to the fateful day of Bethany's death. To establish a timeline, the detectives meticulously gathered evidence from various sources. They interviewed neighbors, who reported hearing heated arguments between Mark and Bethany in the weeks leading up to the murder. The couple's financial records were examined, revealing a pattern of excessive spending and mounting debt. It was discovered that Bethany's teaching job, though highly regarded, did not provide sufficient income, leading her to work as a sommelier to make ends meet. As the investigation progressed, the detectives uncovered a disturbing connection between Mark and a local wine distributor. Records showed that Mark had been purchasing a particular brand of Chardonnay, the same brand found at the crime scene. This discovery raised suspicions that Mark may have tampered with the wine, lacing it with deadly cyanide. To bolster their case, the investigators sought the assistance of forensic experts. The toxicology report confirmed the presence of cyanide in Bethany's system, further strengthening the suspicion against Mark. The detectives also analyzed Mark's financial records, uncovering a series of questionable transactions that pointed to a desperate need for money. With the weight of evidence mounting against Mark, the investigators were determined to bring justice to Bethany and her grieving community. But as they delved deeper into the twisted web of secrets surrounding the Montauk marriage, they would soon discover that there was more to this case than met the eye. Laura Baskilgroves, a 26-year-old sex education teacher at the same high school where Bethany Montauk worked, has emerged as the second suspect in the investigation. Laura, known for her outgoing personality and rapier wit, was a familiar face among the students and staff. However, beneath her friendly demeanor, a deep-seated hatred towards Bethany simmered, fueled by a secret affair with Bethany's husband, Mark Anthony Montauk. The police wasted no time in bringing Laura in for questioning. The interrogation room was tense, the air heavy with anticipation. 
Detective Sarah Anders, a seasoned investigator with a reputation for her relentless pursuit of the truth, sat across from Laura. Detective Anders skillfully probed Laura's involvement in the murder, carefully dissecting her every response. Laura's initial reaction to the accusations was one of anger. She vehemently denied any knowledge of Bethany's murder, her voice filled with outrage. I would never do something so heinous, she exclaimed, her eyes flashing with defiance. However, as the interrogation progressed, cracks began to appear in Laura's facade. With her back against the wall, Laura's denials grew weaker. She attempted to distance herself from the murder, claiming that her affair with Mark had ended months before Bethany's tragic demise. However, the detectives were not easily swayed by her words. They had uncovered a trove of sexually explicit text messages exchanged between Laura and Mark during the time leading up to the murder, revealing their continued sexual involvement. As the interrogation drew to a close, Laura's demeanor shifted from anger to desperation. Tears welled up in her eyes as she realized the gravity of her situation. I never meant for any of this to happen, she whispered, her voice filled with remorse. The detectives remained stoic, their focus unwavering. The investigation into Laura Baskill Groves's involvement in Bethany Montauk's murder continued. The truth, like a jigsaw puzzle, slowly began to take shape. The question remained. Would Laura's secrets be enough to unravel the mystery surrounding Bethany's tragic demise? In the perplexing case of Bethany Montauk's murder, the investigation took an unexpected turn when a seemingly unassuming neighbor, Daniel Logan, emerged as the third suspect. At the age of 72, Daniel was a widower known for his reserved nature and meticulous attention to detail. Living in the same suburban neighborhood as the Montauks, he had been quietly observing their lives, unbeknownst to them. The police, led by the determined husband and wife team of Detective Sarah Anders and Detective James Anders, brought Daniel in for questioning. The interrogation room was dimly lit, creating an atmosphere of suspense and intrigue. Daniel sat calmly, his demeanor betraying no signs of guilt or nervousness. As the detectives delved deeper into their line of questioning, Daniel revealed a shocking motive rooted in blackmail. It appeared that he had stumbled upon a dark secret of Mark Anthony Montauk, Bethany's husband. Mark, a seemingly successful investment banker, had been leading a double life, engaging in extramarital affairs behind Bethany's back. Daniel claimed that Mark had approached him, offering him sex in exchange for his silence. This revelation sent shockwaves through the investigation, as it hinted at a complex web of deceit and betrayal. The detectives meticulously probed Daniel for further details, seeking to uncover the truth behind this sordid affair. Despite the gravity of the situation, Daniel remained composed throughout the interrogation. His calmness added an air of mystery to his involvement in the case. The detectives, determined to uncover every piece of evidence, carefully cross-referenced Daniel's statements with other testimonies and physical evidence collected from the crime scene. As the investigation unfolded, the detectives discovered that Daniel had been keeping a detailed journal, meticulously documenting every interaction he had witnessed between Mark and Laura Baskill Groves, the second suspect. This journal became a crucial piece of evidence, shedding light on the intricate dynamics between the three individuals. With each page turned, the detectives pieced together a timeline of events, connecting Mark's illicit affair with Laura to the murder of Bethany. The journal entries revealed clandestine meetings, secret phone calls, and coded messages exchanged between the two suspects. The investigation into Daniel's involvement in the case continued, as the detectives sought to determine the extent of his knowledge and potential role in the murder. The evidence gathered thus far pointed to a web of secrets, lies, and manipulation, leaving the detectives eager to uncover the full truth. In a shocking turn of events, the truth behind the heinous murder of beloved high school English teacher, Bethany Montauk, had finally been revealed. After months of tireless investigation, the police identified and arrested the murderer, bringing an end to a dark chapter in the history of Wilmington, Delaware. The mastermind behind this sinister plot was none other than Bethany's husband, Mark Anthony Montauk. The 38-year-old, who presented himself as a successful investment banker, was never an actual investment banker. He had never held a job, never even went to college. In fact, he was a high school dropout and functionally illiterate. 
His web of lies and deceit began to unravel when the police discovered his dark secret, driven by a toxic combination of greed, fear, and deception. Mark orchestrated a twisted and frantic plan to keep Bethany from learning the truth about his fraudulent life. In a desperate bid to silence her forever, he poisoned her with a glass of Chardonnay wine laced with deadly cyanide. This chilling act of betrayal sent shockwaves through the community, leaving friends, family, and colleagues in disbelief. But Mark was not acting alone. Another key player in this tragic tale was Laura Baskilgroves, a 26-year-old sex education teacher at the same high school where Bethany worked. Laura, driven by a deep-seated hatred and a secret affair with Mark, manipulated him into carrying out the murder. In her quest to eliminate her romantic rival and claim Mark for herself, she used his dark secrets as leverage. The police, led by the dedicated husband and wife team of Detective Sarah Anders and Detective James Anders, painstakingly pieced together the puzzle that led to the arrest of both Mark and Laura. With unwavering determination, they meticulously collected evidence, interviewed witnesses, and analyzed forensic data. The arrest of Mark Montauk left the community stunned. The facade of a successful investment banker crumbled, revealing a man consumed by fear and deceit. The arrest of Laura Baskilgroves added another layer of shock, as her friendly demeanor masked a sinister and calculating mind. As news of the arrest spread, the community of Wilmington breathed a collective sigh of relief. The dark cloud of uncertainty that had hung over them for months was finally dissipating. The memory of Bethany Montauk, a dedicated and beloved teacher, will forever be etched in their hearts. The trial that followed the arrest of Mark Montauk gripped the community of Wilmington, Delaware in April of 2004. District Attorney Emil Borco, a seasoned prosecutor known for his tenacity, presented a compelling case against the accused. The courtroom was filled with tension as the prosecution meticulously laid out the evidence, painting a vivid picture of the heinous crime that had taken place. The defense attorney, Mark J. Castlebreath, fought vigorously to cast doubt on the evidence presented by the prosecution. Castlebreath, known for his sharp legal mind, argued that there were inconsistencies in the timeline of events and questioned the credibility of some of the witnesses. He attempted to create reasonable doubt in the minds of the jurors, urging them to consider alternative theories. The trial lasted for several days, with both the prosecution and defense presenting their arguments and calling witnesses to the stand. The jury, composed of 12 individuals from various walks of life, carefully listened to the testimonies and examined the evidence. They deliberated for hours, weighing the facts and the arguments presented before reaching their verdict. Finally, the moment arrived. The tension in the courtroom was palpable as the jury foreperson stood up to deliver the verdict. We, the jury, find the defendant, Mark Anthony Montauk, guilty of the murder of Bethany Montauk, the foreperson announced, her voice steady and resolute. Gasps of disbelief echoed through the courtroom as the reality of the verdict sank in. The sentencing phase of the trial commenced shortly after the guilty verdict was announced. The prosecution argued for a harsh punishment, citing the brutal nature of the crime and the devastating impact it had on the victim's family and the community. The defense, on the other hand, pleaded for leniency, highlighting Mark's lack of a criminal record and his potential for rehabilitation. After careful consideration, the judge handed down the sentence. Mark Montauk would serve a term of five years in prison. The courtroom erupted in a mix of emotions, with some expressing relief and others feeling that the sentence was too lenient given the gravity of the crime. As the trial came to a close, the impact of the verdict rippled through the lives of Bethany's friends and family, forever altering their perception of the justice system. They found solace in the fact that the person responsible for Bethany's untimely death would be held accountable, but the pain of their loss would never fully heal. After the trial concluded, the lives of everyone involved in the Bethany Montauk murder case took divergent paths. The suspects, police investigators, and family members were left to grapple with the aftermath of the heinous crime that shook the tight-knit community of Wilmington, Delaware in April of 2002. Mark Anthony Montauk, the convicted murderer, was sentenced to five years in prison with the possibility of parole. His once charming facade crumbled as the truth about his deceitful nature came to light during the trial. With his dark secret exposed, he became a pariah, 
shunned by the community that had once held him in high regard. The Montauk residence, once a symbol of a seemingly idyllic life, now stood as a haunting reminder of the tragedy that unfolded within its walls. Laura Baskilgroves, the co-conspirator in the murder plot, faced a different fate. Her involvement in the crime tarnished her reputation as a respected educator. The revelation of her manipulative actions left her isolated and ostracized from the community she had once been a part of. Seeking redemption, after her prison sentence of 10 months, she relocated to Orlando, Florida, hoping to start anew and leave behind the dark past that haunted her. As the years passed, the scars left by the Bethany Montauk murder case began to heal, albeit slowly. The community gradually moved forward, determined to not let the darkness overshadow the resilience and spirit that defined Wilmington. The case served as a stark reminder of the fragility of life and the importance of cherishing those we hold dear. The case of Bethany Montauk's murder serves as a chilling reminder of the depths to which human nature can sink. It highlights the importance of uncovering the truth, no matter how hidden or complex it may be. Join us next time on True Crime Case Files as we delve into another intriguing and shocking criminal case that will leave you questioning the depths of the human psyche. Hey, true crime case solvers, interested in more real-life murder mysteries? Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. And do you have any thoughts about this case or have a case of your own you'd like us to investigate? Leave us a comment. Until then, stay safe, true crime case solvers.